India's Kagan Yatri or astronaut group captain Subhanshu Shukla is currently at the International Space Station. India has partaken in what is called a commercial space mission where India has paid close to $70 million for this seat and to learn the basics of human space flight. Is there a lot more in commercial learnings from this Axiom for mission for all the partners, SpaceX, Axiom, India, NASA, and going forward for commercial space flight. To explain some of these complexities, I have with me George Feynman. He's an aerospace engineer turned space entrepreneur and investor, somebody who keeps a close watch on the American space ecosystem and the Indian space ecosystem. Thanks a lot for joining me, George. Nice to be here. Good to see you again. My pleasure. Uh, start off, that group captain Shukla is there at the International Space Station as part of a commercial space mission. What does it mean for you? Oh, I mean, to see more countries participating in human space flight is always a, a wonderful thing because there is so much we learn from each other, uh, not just about how to perform in space, but uh, always diversity of perspectives and experience uh, adds to that. Uh, in this particular case, it's particularly powerful because we have a, a new government institution collaborating on the International Space Station. You uh, meaning the I, Indian Space Research Organization? Yes, ISRO. We've obviously had um, Europeans flying to the International Space Station for some time. And now we have uh, Indian astronauts and Polish and Hungarian astronauts there, but through a commercial mission, which is a relatively new thing. We've had a couple of these before um, uh, on the, what, what in the United States we call them private astronaut missions or PAM missions. Um, and this is the fourth one, but this is uh, particularly powerful because of India's rise as a space power. And the way it kind of came about as an agreement between uh, the leadership of India, the leadership of the United States, that this is a great way for India to both jumpstart, but also to better integrate our programs. And then even more powerfully, to do that through commercial companies uh, and, and then going to a government-led uh, uh, private space or government-led space station. A uh, very complex set of, uh, of, of interests there that have to be aligned. Sure. Tell me a little bit about the players there and how do you think it all kind of gelled together. So I, I think, so first of all, you have uh, the International Space Station, which is a consortium of, of many countries, um, and uh, India is not yet, uh, or not part of that officially. So you, you had to get all of those countries to agree that this very large, expensive asset that they've invested together should be open to other countries and other users to come and visit. Uh, that was a big decision several years ago. Um, because uh, this particular mission is, is issued through NASA, so that NASA then put out a tender for private astronaut missions, and, and Axiom Space was the company that won that tender. Axiom is, um, wants to build its own commercial space station in the future, and they're doing a lot of other things, uh, but they don't have their own rocket. So they're flying on SpaceX, which has the Falcon 9 rocket with the Crew Dragon capsule on top. So all, all together, you have a, a, a government uh, contracting with a private company, which is contracting with a private transportation vehicle, which is then coordinating and being certified by NASA and the FAA to fly to, which is an international consortium space station. So complex set of players. Sure. But, but they seem to have ironed out all of that because it's government to a a private contractor, then to another government and to another private player. And all of this, how does it look like to you? Well, surprisingly smooth. Um, I, I think that uh, what was interesting on this mission is, uh, of course, there were a few technical complexities uh, with the rocket. Um, human space flight isn't quite routine yet. Uh, this was the 10th mission, I think you pointed yes. out to me, uh, of a human space flight vehicle on a Falcon 9 rocket. And no, 11, because one is completed, so okay, 11 now. Okay, so 11 now. And uh, uh, the, um, the, every rocket leading up to launch goes through a complex series of checks and, and, and uh, sometimes rectifications. 
And that occurred in this case. Sure. And there were delays. Yes. And, and there were glitches on the rocket. There were glitches on the space station. What All I, sorts of things happened. What I think was interesting is that uh, some of those items became uh, something that uh, Israel wanted to pay particular attention to. And so... I don't know what all the contracts actually said, but uh, ostensibly, uh, this was a SpaceX rocket certified by NASA and the FAA, and they are responsible for deciding what happens. But because it's a it's a very important mission, uh, I think the fact that um, the operators of the rocket, the their customer, which is Axiom, uh, were attentive and uh, listening carefully to what their customers had to say, and so for a a, a major government to be able to, uh, you know, say we as a customer have certain expectations and needs for a private company to then how to understand how to respect those those uh, requests and, and uh, uh, desires for input uh, and then to communicate to another private company and for them to collectively make a, a good decision. Uh, you know, it's not a, a natural, uh, necessarily easy outcome. Uh, I think even government to government, there can be tensions on, you know, how much do you give priority to who says what? Um, and on top of that, uh, you know, there's ITAR. So what SpaceX can legally say to a non-U.S. entity, um, there's, there's limits as to how far that can go. And I think that requires a great degree of trust. Um, and trust comes through communication and the style of communication. And um, my impression, uh, obviously I'm not an insider, I wasn't part of any of these companies, but I, I did have a, a bit of a, a front row seat to watch some of this play out. And I'm, I'm very impressed with uh, the decorum of how everybody handled it uh, and uh, how they eventually came to the good decisions uh, for everybody involved. So the hiccups also helped iron out wrinkles which could be there and a learning for future commercial space activities? Absolutely. I think uh, what we're all discovering is that the power of uh, economics and commercial operators uh, is, is really quite powerful. And so if we want to scale up uh, human activity in space while also making it economically viable for interesting things to happen, whether that's trade between countries, uh, technology development, cures for cancer, uh, growing future organs and, and, and just all sorts of uh, impacts that that can have on different industries. We need to learn how the private sector will interact with the government sector because the government sector is definitely the dominant animal here. Um, there, so that's where the money is, uh, that's where the uh, setting of priorities are and the objectives. But commercial companies have quite a lot of capabilities as well. And how do we harness those within the United States is a tricky subject. To now do that internationally and prove out how that can work really could be quite uh, powerful and, and incredible. So, so it was, if you can lay out the foundation for me, it was government to a business, business to a government, and then business to another uh, yeah. business. Just lay that out for us a little bit. Well, you know, there's the acronym uh, B to C or B to B. Uh, and in this case, it's G to B to B with another G sort of overlay on top of that. And so just explain uh, that in, from from B to G, meaning what business to So uh, a G to B would be government to business. B to B would be business to business. And so in this case, we have uh, first there's an overlay of G to G. You know, U.S. government and, and Indian government saying, hey, this is a good idea. Sure. Uh, then you empower the government agencies and the private businesses to get together and negotiate under that framework of a G2G -G understanding. And so in this case, the G, the first G is, uh, is India, the first B is Axiom Space, and then the second B is SpaceX. But then they all have to eventually go to the destination, which is a whole bunch of Gs working together, which is the International <laughs> Space Station. So uh, I, I think this is a, it's a complex environment with different styles of, of behavior and different standards for communication. Um, and to see it all working out um, is, is powerful. And I hope, um, you know, in India, uh, over the last few years, we've seen the creation of InSpace, uh, InSpace taking over certain responsibilities within the Department of Space for the promotion of space, many more private companies coming up with good ideas, um, and to see that nurturing, and now to see uh, Israel figuring out how to work on an international basis with foreign companies um, I think that's a great um, 
it's not just symbolic, but it also is practical in terms of the skill sets needed to make this work uh, in the future. So space acting like a unifier, a unifier in, in these highly uh, fractured international relations of the world? Well, I think that's the great thing is that they're less fractured now, right? Um, there are At least in space. Yeah, there, well, there are still lines, and, but we're figuring out how to build the bridges uh, across those lines and to facilitate that communication. And it really comes down to people-to-people -people relationships. Um, and I think that's, uh, we've had two administrations in the United States. So the uh, initial agreement uh, for an Indian astronaut to fly was under the previous administration, the execution under this administration, and in an environment of a lot of change in the United States in terms of priorities and, and what to do. And NASA also undergoing a tremendous amount of change. Yes. So the fact that uh, this priority has stayed uh, centermost and is, is going well, uh, I think that bodes uh, great promise for uh, both human spaceflight and also commercial uh, spaceflight and uh, government commercial cooperation. And I think that's going to accelerate progress for all of us. All in all, looks good? I think so. I mean, uh, you know, uh, space is hard, right? You've reported a lot on uh, some of the challenges and some of the previous missions to ISS, uh, but they all have worked out well, and they've all worked out well because people have communicated and worked together. Thanks a lot for speaking to me, George. Always so much to learn from your experience as an aerospace engineer, not turning into an investor and somebody who's an entrepreneur, and also looking at global relations and looking at how commercial partnerships could go a long way in keeping space as a destination, not just for harmony, but also for commercial utilization. Excellent. Thank you. Good to be here. So that was George Weinman telling us how the Axiom Formation, where we saw hiccups, where we saw some stray nerves, but end of the day, it all fructified well. Group Captain Shukla is in space, continuing with his work on the, on the mission. So NASA, ISRO, Axiom, SpaceX, all managed to get their stuff right, and things have worked out. So a new framework being laid, how partnerships can be made in commercial space. In New Delhi, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.